guys, welcome back and welcome to part two of prepping your cart. So in the first episode, we kind of took a look at what do you do about stripping the cart down, cleaning it up, making sure that parts are not cracked, all those kinds of things. And now it's time to go and reassemble everything to get the cart ready to put back on the track. All right. And so again, this is one of those things where we take a lot of time and, and look at things real carefully, make sure that things line up, things are lubricated correctly, all those kinds of things. So in this video, I'm going to show you a few of the tricks that I use to get the cart ready to hit the track. So here we go. Okay, so one of the things that I like to do when I'm prepping a cart, even after I've cleaned everything up, I like to take a little bit of brake cleaner and go over the axle and just kind of clean it up because you can get residual from the cleaner and that residual can sometimes cause your hubs to slip and so you don't want that to happen. Um, these axles, you, it's pretty important to make sure that everything is lined up uh, correctly and spaced and that your hubs are not moving. Even if they don't come off, it's still important from a performance standpoint to have that hub have just a really clean residue free surface. And the same thing not only for the axle, but the actual hub itself. I don't know if you can see it, but I've already gone in and cleaned this up. And it's just absolutely as clean as can be. So that there's no grit, no oil, no dirt, nothing like that in there to cause any problems. So then when I'm done with that, then it becomes a really simple thing. I just put in the keyway, which is right here on the axle. And it's not wanting to go in just exactly. So we'll take a little hammer and just kind of tap it just a little bit, just a mallet. Just hold it and just, there it is. Slide this on here like so. Now one of the things that you have to do to get your axle spacing just right, the cart um, can have a 55 inch rear track. And so for this particular cart with this particular hub, I need to have a gap from this bearing to the end of, of this hub of uh, five and three quarters inches. So I'll just measure that and make sure that I've got it set correctly just to double check and I'm a little long so I need to come in just a little bit try that that's gonna be pretty close yep right on the money okay. just rotate the axle back oops want to get it turning right and we're good to go now all you got to do is just add the wheel and uh, zip that up and we're done. So sometimes when I tell you stories about how to prep a cart or a, or a race car, it's usually because there's an experience there where you learn the hard way. Let me tell you a story about not having hubs that are clean. I was going in a race, I was a teenager, doing pretty well, and all of a sudden going into a corner, I was passed by my outside rear tire. And I, it's about the time I was thinking, oh, this is not good. I went screaming off the track. The exposed axle end dug into the dirt, and it flipped the cart. And as I soared through the air, I looked down at my feet, looking at clouds and blue sky, which is never a good thing. Landed in the dirt, which fortunately was a pretty soft landing. Unfortunately, the cart was still flipping, and it came over and landed on top of me. And that hurt. So, keep your hubs clean. Save yourself from that experience. You can have plenty of other experiences. This is one you can avoid. What I like to do is um, when I've got some of these items that, that might require some redundancy, like brake pedals, um, you don't want your brake pedal falling off. And the way these things usually work is, is you've got a clip that fits in here to secure the, the pedal, but then you have a clip on the other end that clamps down on the uh, on the turnbuckle. So what I do is I kind of like to have kind of a double security thing. You just kind of slip this thing in here and then you clip it in like that, okay? But what I like to do then for just an extra safe um, operation is I will go and I'll put a tie wrap around it like so if it'll cooperate. And I'll just put it up here and then kind of wang this thing down and get it snug. We'll just put the, the screwdriver on it and tighten. 
And that's just a little bit of, uh, of an insurance policy. And when you look at my carts, or my race cars, even then, I'll always go and I'll double up on these things because, to be honest with you, tie wraps are cheap. And so that's a, a very inexpensive way of having a little bit of extra redundancy in case something were to fail. So that's just another little tip of stuff that I like to do um, when I'm doing the cart. One thing I'll call out with this, given you got this knob and all that and your foot's resting right over here, you definitely want this away from your foot because otherwise that thing, it'll start wearing a hole in your skin. So All right, oh, now it's time for another story. That whole zip tie around the brake clevis thing, what happened was, the thing that I learned was a buddy of mine was racing his shifter car here at the local track, coming into a corner, top gear, heavy braking, and he went and stepped on the brake pedal, and right then that brake clevis failed, popped off, and so when he went to the brakes, there was nobody home. He went straight off the track, hit the barriers, broke his left foot, and was in a walking boot for several months. A five cent zip tie could have prevented that. So as you go and prepare your cart, I'm encouraging you, go and look for stuff that can fail. A little five cent zip tie can save you a whole lot of pain and grief and suffering down the road. One of the things that you want to look at is, is like this is the ignition box for the, the Honda shifter engine. Um, you want to make sure that everything is secure. You don't want wires to be in a position where they can fall off or the whole unit fall off. And under here is the fuel pump. You want to make sure that all your fuel lines are not um, frayed or abraded. You want to make sure that there's uh, zip ties around all of them so they don't fall off. Nothing will shut a cart down faster than to have an ignition wire falling off or your fuel line falling off. Okay, so I like to do things on a systems approach. So I'll go through and check all the nuts and bolts of the steering system first before I go and move over to adjusting the gear lever or uh, checking the brakes. And so sometimes to get to a component, you've got to remove other components to get at them. For example, these bolts right here, you've got to take the gas tank out to actually go and tighten them down. So I'm going to go do that right now. Got the gas tank out, and I just start tightening it down like that. Just take your time. It does take a little extra time to do it, but it's well worth the result. Another area on a shifter cart that can be a problem is keeping the air filter on. Now I'm lucky, I've got a really trick mount from Swede Tech. It works fantastic, but you've got a uh, hose clamp on this end and then you have a, a mount support uh, with basically a Velcro strap that holds this thing on. Sometimes you've got to spend a little bit of money to get exactly the right component so that you don't lose an air filter. Another thing I highly recommend doing is just take some WD-40 and just put it on your exhaust system. And um, it's a great way to keep the exhaust system from rusting. And if it's not rusting, then it's not going to crack. And so just, you know, spray the WD-40 on there, put it on pretty heavy. You can't hurt anything. And um, that will prohibit the rust from coming in, or inhibit the rust from coming in and um, it'll make your pipe last longer. Okay guys, so that's it. That's how you prepare a shifter cart. Um, I want you to be aware that when you go in and you prepare your cart, you always, again, go for safety, reliability, performance, and then cosmetics, right? So we're gonna keep it in that order. The other thing that I would tell you is, is that this is a shifter cart, guys, and so you're gonna spend probably more time in the garage prepping the cart than you will actually spend on the track. But the thing is, if you put the work in here, then that's going to make your life easier at the track, and so you'll spend more time behind the wheel, and then you can start developing yourself as a driver and developing the cart to get it to handle the way that you would like it to handle. So, I hope this video was helpful for you. I uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you later.